we are going to spend some time in the uplink power control, which is uh, rather important in LTE network. So uplink power control is divided into open loop power control, inner loop power control, and closed loop power control. So open loop power control simply means that there is no feedback from the other party. So the inner B initially only sets an expectation power. So a PRES preamble expected receive power. Where the UE has to estimate the downlink path loss by the calculation itself and assuming that uplink path loss is exactly the same with downlink path loss. So the UE has to calculate the uplink transmit power according to the expectation and also the uplink path loss. So UE has to set the initial transmit power according to the calculation followed by try uh, sending the preamble. If the first preamble fail, then the user will increase the transmit power for the next preamble attempt. And uh, in LTE, there are a few preamble formats which has been defined in the 3GPP. So for the user, they are using this formula as to calculate the initial transmit power where it equals to the minimum between the maximum transmit power of the mobile phone. Okay, compare with, so this is the calculation where the user has to compare, has to calculate the expected preamble receive power, which is set by the inner B, plus the path loss, which the user has to calculate the downlink path loss and use it as assuming that uplink path loss is the same with downlink plus the delta of preamble, where the preamble, the formula is using preamble format zero as a benchmark, as a reference. So if the network is using the preamble of other format, other than format zero, then a predefined preamble offset has to be included in the calculation. So this is the formula for the first preamble transmission. If the first transmission fail, a user has to increase the power of the preamble in the next transmission and the power ramp up step is called delta step. This is the ramp up step. And end preamble is the number of the preamble transmission time. So for the second time, that is two, two minus one, where the user is going to ramp up the power of the transmission by one step. So this is the formula for the PRESH power control for uplink, uplink open loop power control, where they are all based on the UE estimation without any feedback from the inner B. A similar concept is used for the first transmission of PUSCH. So the user is using a similar concept to calculate the initial transmit power of the PUSCH where the power equals to the minimum between the total allowable uh, maximum transmit power of the mobile phone. Compare it with 10 log M PUSH. M PUSH equals to the number of resource block used by the PUSH. So if the number of resource block assigned is greater, then the user has to use a higher power for PUSH. So 10 log number of resource block plus POPUSCH, that is the expected power of the PUSCH according to the transport block size. Alpha times PL alpha is the, the factor, is the path loss compensation factor. The path loss calculation is the same with the PRETCH where the user estimate the downlink path loss and use it in the uplink calculation. And a delta of the TF1. Again, that is the TF is actually means transport format. So the calculation is, uh, is used and by assuming the basic transport format. If a user is using a different transport format, then the delta, which has been set earlier for each modulation and coding scheme, it has to be included in this formula. Plus, 
FI. FI is the feedback from the inert B. So without FI, then this is open load power control. But PUSH will be used in a continuous transmission. Hence, for the next transmission, the inner B send the feedback in the format of TPC and the user has to convert TPC into the power adjustment, which is FI. So that will be used in order to adjust the power of the PUSCH. So this is all about how would the inner B decide the TPC value, which is going to affect the FI. There are two mechanisms for the TPC decision. Number one, it is called inner loop power control. Inner loop power control is used for the services which are undergoing the dynamic scheduling. Dynamic scheduling, it means the user will be scheduled in a one millisecond of TTI. So from time to time, the user has been sending uplink user data by using PUSCH. Inner B measured the uplink PUSCH power density, convert it into SINR, and compare it with the target SINR, and to decide the power control command, which is TPC. The second method is called closed loop power control, where this is only used for semi-persistent scheduling. Semi-persistent scheduling is a special scheduling algorithm designed for VOIP, VOLTE services, where the user will only monitor the scheduling channel once in a 20 millisecond. So for semi-persistent scheduling, inner B receive PUSCH and proceed with measuring the initial block error rate and compare it with a target. If the initial block error rate measured is greater than the target, then a TPC of increased power will be sent to the user, which is eventually going to affect the value of the FI. So this is the difference between the dynamic scheduling and semi-persistent scheduling. So we have seen earlier that a user has to adjust FI according to the TPC. So the FI is decided based on the TPC, which it could be two bits or one bit, depending on the DCI format, which is used by the inner B. And there are two modes to decide the value of the FI. The mode number one is called accumulated mode. Accumulated mode means that the current adjustment of FI equals to the previous adjustment plus the current changes. So I minus K PUSCH, K in FDD, in the LT FDD system, K is fixed to be four, which is four subframe delay. So that means for accumulated mode, the current FI is always related and affected by the previous power adjustment plus the current current required adjustment, which has been sent which has been sent by E B in four subframe earlier. I minus four. Four subframe delay is a fixed delay in LTE FDD. So for absolute mode, then FI does not consider the previous adjustment, which is the F I minus one. Absolute mode does not consider F I minus one. So only the current adjustment, which is sent for subframe earlier, will be considered in absolute mode. So once the user receives the TPC value, then it depends on the mode, where it could be accumulated or absolute mode, and the different TPC value it actually indicates different power adjustment, which for accumulated mode, it could be from minus one until three. For absolute mode, it could be from minus four until four dB. It's the same for DCI format 3A, where only one bit is used for the TPC, and that is only usable for accumulated mode.
So PUSCH is used to carry data and also sometimes the PUSCH is used to carry message tree, which is RRC connection request. So message tree is a rather important message for the user to stay, uh, to get the random access procedure success. So a certain a specific message tree offset has to be included in the formula. So the formula is exactly the same with the previous page where the power of the PUSCH is considered all of this expectation power, path loss, transport format, and the power adjustment with one additional parameters to be included, which is the power offset of message tree. And the same algorithm is used for PUCCH power control. User use PUCCH to send acknowledgement and negative acknowledgement information to report CQI or to send uplink scheduling request. So a user has to use a similar concept where to, to know that the expectation power of the PUCCH set in the inner bit to convert the downlink path loss, assuming it is the same with the uplink path loss, plus the offset for a different information carried on in the PUCCH, whereas it could be the CQI, the number of bit for CQI, and a number of bit for the HARQ. So different of the information field requires different offset. Plus the PUCCH format um, offset. So different PUCCH offset requires different delta of the power where the PUCCH offset start from PUCCH format 1, 1B, 2, 2A, and 2B. So different PUCCH format requires, or it has a different preset power offset here, plus GI. So GI, again, is determined by the inner B by sending TPC. So for PUCCH, the inner B receive the PUCCH message sent by the user. In a B measured the uplink PUCCH SINR, compare it with a target value, and hence to decide if the TPC to be sent to the user, whereas two bits could be used or one bit of the TPC will be used. So for PUCCH, the TPC mode, power adjustment mode, only include accumulated mode, where it means GI equals to the previous adjustment plus the current adjustment which has been sent for subframe earlier. Then the user follow the 3GPP defined power adjustment step. If a 2-bit TPC is used, means the TPC value range from 0 until 3 and each of the value represent different FI, different um, adjustment which is used in, in this formula. So if one bit is used, then we only have two TPC value, which could be zero and one. And that tells a uh, adjustment of minus one and one. So that's all for the topic of the power control in the downlink and uplink in the LTE. <laughs>